like Senator Flood and many other people who have spoken up, I was, I was moved to stand up too. Colleagues, nothing bad will happen if we pass this bill. Nothing bad will happen if we pass this bill. And I'm proud to be a co-sponsor and supporter of this bill. Student journalists in Nebraska are already supervised by faculty advisors, and they all take their writing and the impact of what they say much more seriously than we take it here in the legislature based on some of the things opponents to this bill have said on the record already. The bulk of this opposition that I'm hearing basically boils down to what if somebody under the age of 18 has an opinion that's a little bit spicy and shares it in the newspaper? What if a student commits a little bit of thought crime? That's how you sound. That's how you sound in opposition to this bill. Nebraska students do not need the Nebraska legislature to protect them from their thoughts. We need to tell students that we support the exchange of ideas, that we support their education, and that we support the educators in Nebraska who are supervising these students already. Senator Lowe says it only takes one mistake to ruin things. We, and we meaning lawmakers, allow all kinds of people in our society to make mistakes. Uh, and then we throw their lives away and we do nothing to help them up and we say, well, they deserved what they got because they made a mistake. So when you're saying something like it only takes one mistake to ruin things in the context of student journalism, in the context of a 16-year-old writing a spicy opinion in their public school newspaper, that's laughable compared to the things that you people throw folks' lives away for all the time through the policies that you pass. People in this body think that a child under 18 who survives incest and becomes pregnant is responsible enough to raise that whole entire child, but they're too irresponsible to write a newspaper column. These people think that children under 18 are responsible enough to go to court without an attorney representing them, but they're too irresponsible to write a newspaper column. Or they think they're responsible enough to be tried as adults and do prison time with adults but they're too irresponsible to write a newspaper column. Opponents, this is how you sound, and this isn't the issue for you to die over. I would encourage you to turn your lights off and give up this embarrassing fight and let this move on. I'm speaking to you as a state journalism champion from Blair, Nebraska, actually, and my journalism advisor and the professor, or the teacher that we had in, in high school, his name was Bob Bear, and he had a button that he wore, and I remember verbatim exactly what it said. It said, kudos to journalism educators who teach First Amendment principles in practice rather than as a distant theory. Like, it's kind of a mouthful, but I remember this button that he wore every day. Kudos to journalism educators who teach First Amendment principles in practice rather than as a distant theory. What LB88 does is it empowers journalism educators to support their students by teaching those First Amendment principles in practice, not as a theory. And I went on to attend Dana College in Blair, Nebraska, which is no longer around because the school sold to a private organization and lost its accreditation. And if Groney thinks that people in here went to a crappy college, Senator Groney thinks people went to a crappy college, it literally doesn't matter. And it's totally in character for him to say something bombastic like that. And I'm not even sure that he really believes that. But there was another remark that he made that I do not want to go unaddressed. For Senator Groney to say that someone is a mongrel because they are of, quote, mixed lineage, unquote, is disgusting. It's racist, it's a mess, and I don't even know what mixed lineage means to him. And it's not my role to take offense on behalf of Senator Flood, who that was directed to, and Senator Flood says that he's not offended, but I want us to be aware of the kind of normalizing of racist comments like that, and you know, Senator Clements talking about allowing any kind of speech without oversight. Time, what I can tell you is that kids of today are not using racist language like that.